Hey everyone, how's it going? Thanks so much for tuning in. For today's video, I'm proud to present an up close and personal in-depth look with the Fiat 124 Spider. I recently uploaded a review on the all new Mazda MX-5, which this car is based on, and while the two share a lot of similar design elements, the Fiat introduces a number of unique qualities to really set it apart. I mean, it makes the decision so hard between the two, and you'll see what I mean in just a bit. If you'd like to learn more about the MX-5, click the link in the top right hand corner of the video. In this review, we'll start it up, show the engine, get an exhaust clip, and go over the performance data, taking a thorough drive and show you many of the unique aspects throughout the interior as well as exterior. So without further ado, let's go ahead and hop on in, start it up, let it run. The 124 Spider comes standard with a remote smart key entry system, which is a $130 option on the MX-5. It allows you to simply lock and unlock the car by just keeping the key fob in your pocket and using the little buttons on each door handle. Our tester is finished in Bianco Perla Tricoat, which is a $595 color option. Inside, you'll find a two-tone combination of saddle brown leather and black accents, and all black interior is also available. To start, all you have to do is just make sure you have the key fob within the interior, then simply put your foot on the brake and hit the dash mounted button to go. The 124 Spider uses the same double pinion electronic power assist steering rack that was introduced on the new MX-5. It offers excellent feedback and a proper level of precision and responsiveness to make it a really fun car through the corners. It's easy to control with a nice tight feel and minimal steering kickback. Despite a number of similarities between the cars, the 124's road behaviors are notably different than the MX-5. If the Mazda is more on the raw and visceral side, the Fiat is more relaxed and easygoing. The overall ratio is unchanged at 15.5 to 1 and it still takes 2.7 turns to lock. The turning circle is measured at just 30.8 feet. The Fiat also benefits from the new MX-5's reduced steering shaft friction, weight saving measures and lower center of gravity. Slightly larger and a tad heavier, the 124 remains a car that's been designed around its driver. It offers a different driving experience that will appeal to a different customer set. From the driver's seat, you'll certainly notice the 124's longer hood. It doesn't slope down as far as the MX-5's hood, nor does it have the defined fender peaks, but as you'll see throughout the video, forward visibility remains excellent. The steering wheel itself is a sporty three-spoke multifunction design that's wrapped in leather, accented by bright silver trim, and finished off with grip bolsters at 2 and 10. <laughs> All trim levels of the 124 are offered with your choice of two transmissions, including a standard 6-speed manual or an ISIN 6-speed automatic for $1,350. The manual is the same one used in the third generation MX-5, but Fiat implemented unique gear ratios. The automatic transmission uses a lock-up torque converter with a damper. The lock-up control is available from second gear and up, offering more of a direct feeling in response to pedal operation. I haven't driven the manual 124 yet, but the MX-5 I tested recently had Mazda's new Skyactiv 6-speed, which isn't shared with the 124. Having driven the previous generation MX-5, the manual transmission is going to be the best way to experience everything this car has to offer. It's one of the most satisfying manual transmissions out there, offering short throws, easy operation, and a nicely weighted clutch. It's that key ingredient that makes it much more of an engaging sports car. As far as automatics go, this one is quite good, offering rev match downshifts and smooth behavior. I think you lose a little bit of quickness with the auto, but if you prefer to let the car do its own thing and sacrifice a little sportiness, it's certainly a fine choice. The Abarth model takes the performance envelope further by adding a mechanical limited slip differential along with a number of suspension enhancements and a modest bump in power to bring it more in line with the MX-5 Club. 
on the 124, the only way to get panel shifters with the automatic is to go for the Abarth. Otherwise, the only way to shift manually, unless you opt for the manual, of course, is by the console shifter. In contrast, every automatic equipped MX-5 comes standard with paddle shifters. So now let's go ahead and flip on the automatic bifunction projector headlamps, fog lamps, and the hazards. Both windows are automatic down. Now let's go ahead and check out the exterior, shall we? Upon closing the door, the vehicle will chime for a few seconds to let you know it's lost detection of the proximity key fob. This year, Fiat has reintroduced one of their storied nameplates, the 124 Spider. It continues a historical lineage that first began back in 1966 when the first 124 Spider made its initial debut in Italy at the Turin Auto Show. While it didn't make its way stateside until 1968, the U.S. would eventually become its biggest market up until its eventual discontinuation in 1985. Throughout its 19-year production run, the original Spider received a number of updates here and there, but it never received a thorough redesign. Simple, affordable, and beautiful, the Spider became an icon, selling more than 170,000 units in the U.S. alone. Today, only about 8,000 of those are still registered, but with the Spider's return for the 2017 model year, Fiat aims to pay homage to classic motoring with a fully modern package that combines the performance and agility of a proper sports car with unmistakable Italian flavor. While the original car was based on Fiat's mid-range 124 sedan, this 124 Spider is actually based on the all-new 4th generation Mazda MX-5 Miata. Similarities aside, the 124 is much more than a rebadge. Designed in Italy and built in Japan, it combines long-running passions for design and aesthetics with a winning sports car platform known the world over to create a car that delivers a unique experience all its own. Having driven the Mazda and the Fiat, it's clear that these two cars are on different missions. The MX-5 certainly needs no introduction, as it has pretty much been the quintessential roadster for over 25 years now. Purposeful, poised, and playful, it's the enthusiast sports car. The 124 Spider shares the same platform, interior, and much of the running gear, but the engine and suspension tuning are all Fiat. Depending on how you look at it, it's also a nicer car when it comes to appointments and general mannerisms. That being said, the 124 is more like the Grand Touring counterpart to the MX-5. It feels more mature. Of course, there's the sportier Abarth model that takes the fight right to the MX-5 club's doorstep. Both the Mazda and the Fiat are terrific offerings and both have their pros and cons. At the end of the day, it all really boils down to what you're wanting to get out of your car, as pricing is just as similar as real-world performance. Where the 124 really distinguishes itself is styling. Aside from the windshield header, every body panel on the 124 is unique. Just like the MX-5, they're a mix of aluminum and steel. The silhouette is meant to be a modern reinterpretation of the original 124. It's about 5.5 inches longer than the MX-5, mostly evident with the expansive hood and front and rear overhangs. Some classic touches include the hexagonal upper grille and grille pattern, the twin power domes on the hood, and the horizontal tail lamps. Perhaps the most noticeable trait are the long shoulder lines that begin in the front fenders and extend down the body before kicking up over and across the rear fenders, just like the original. The tail end is also very cool as the rear fenders are shaped so that the upper surface falls inward toward the deck lid, creating what looks like a V while highlighting the sculpted ducktail spoiler. The painted to match center portion of the LED tail lamps give the appearance of a closed loop design. The chassis incorporates 71% high tensile steel within the body, frame, and underbody cross members. The body structure itself uses straight beams and a continuous framework from the front bumper to the rear bulkhead. It's designed to resist deformation while simultaneously diffusing impact forces in the event of an accident. Being an open top vehicle, additional reinforcements were added behind the seats, including the rear bulkhead and roll bars, both of which are made from aluminum. The 124 Spider is offered in three trim levels, including the $24,995 Classica, the $27,845 Lusso, and the $28,195 Abarth. Our Lusso tester, equipped with the optional Trico paint, safety and comfort collection, automatic transmission, and a $995 destination fee, stickers for $31,930. Looking back, that's $600 more than the 2016 MX-5 Grand Touring I tested. Lastly, front fog lamps are added on the Lusso, while adaptive LED headlamps are optional. 
The Lusso also features the silver painted windshield header and roll bar cover, not to mention dual chrome exhaust tips and larger wheels. Outside of having a power retracting top, the 124 Spider's manually folding soft top is probably the easiest setup you'll ever use. Unchanged from the MX-5, the whole process takes about 5 seconds, making it super convenient. Whether you want to drop it at a stoplight or secure it back in the event of a sudden rain shower, its light, user-friendly design is simply perfect. To lower it, there's a lever at the top of the windshield header. As you push it back behind the roll bars, apply just a bit of pressure to ensure it locks in place. There's another handle in between the seats and right above the storage compartment that unlocks the top and raises it a few inches so it's easier to reach to close it. Once released, simply grab it and pull it to the windshield while simultaneously locking it back in place. The lightweight design can be attributed to the use of aluminum for the top bows and supports. With the top down, there's a removable wind deflector in between the seats to reduce cabin air turbulence. 14 spoke 16 by 6.5 inch wheels are standard on the Classica and come wrapped in 195.50 3 season Yokohama performance tires. With the Lusso, you receive larger 12-spoke 17 by 7 inch wheels and 205-45 three-season Bridgestone tires that are capable of holding around 0.9 G of lateral acceleration. Providing strong and reliable braking performance are 11 inch internally ventilated front discs and 11 inch solid rear discs just like the MX-5. Each are clamped down by single piston aluminum calipers. With this setup, the 124 can stop from 60 miles an hour in about 113 feet. A higher performing Brembo braking system is optional in the Abarth, which includes red four piston calipers for greater bite. Four wheel, four channel ABS with electronic brake force distribution is also included, along with dynamic stability and traction control. The fully independent suspension consists of double wishbones with aluminum upper and lower control arms in front and a multi link rear with an aluminum bearing support. Monotube shocks can be found at each corner unless you go for the Abarth, which adds Bilsteins just like the MX5 Club. Additional aluminum components include the front suspension knuckles and differential housing. Like the MX-5, the 124 exhibits excellent road manners and superb control in twisty roads. Fiat actually dialed back some of the body roll that's characteristic to the MX-5, allowing it to corner flatter and feel somewhat more predictable. The chassis and suspension is still stiff, but ride quality is also a tad better. It still communicates the road surface well, but is never unsettled nor does it ever transmit negative feedback such as cowl shake. Its lightness plays a big role in its controllability and allows for greater immediacy with steering inputs. Overall length is 159.6 inches with a width of 68.5 inches and a height of 48.5 inches. It rides on a 90.9 .9 inch wheelbase and has a curb weight of around 2,476 pounds. 54% of that weight rides over the front. Where the MX-5 is powered by Mazda's all-new 2.0-liter Skyactiv G 4-cylinder, the 124 Spider borrows its engine from the Fiat 500 Abarth, a 1.4-liter turbocharged 4-cylinder. In fact, this is the first time this engine has been installed into a rear-wheel drive vehicle. It features a cast iron block with an aluminum bed plate and head, a singular head cam design with 4 valves per cylinder and a new engine air intake system compared to front-wheel drive applications. Fuel is delivered via sequential multiport injection. The compression ratio is rated at 9.8 to 1, while maximum engine speed is electronically limited to 6,250 RPM. A front mounted intercooler reduces the temperature of the charge air, leading to denser air and more efficient combustion. Maximum boost pressure is 22 psi. In the Classica and Lusso trims, the 124 develops 160 horsepower at 5,500 rpm and 184 pound-feet of torque at 3,200 rpm. The Abarth increases horsepower by 4 while torque remains the same. However, with the Abarth's exclusive sport mode, peak torque comes on a lot sooner at 2,500 rpm. Looking at the raw numbers, the Lusso is making 5 horsepower and 36 pound-feet of torque more than the MX-5 Grand Touring I tested recently. Despite this, Mazda's engine does feel more energetic and ready to go. I'd even go as far as to say it's a little bit quicker around town. You have some noticeable turbo lag in the Fiat when accelerating hard from a standstill, but having the additional torque is certainly nice, especially on the freeway and back roads, as you don't have to work the car quite as hard when driving spiritedly. When it comes to low speed driving, I'd pick the MX-5 as the more fun choice as the 124 will remain relatively docile until provoked, but that's all personal preference. 
I'd estimate it takes the 124 less than 6.8 seconds to hit 60 miles an hour when equipped with the automatic. You'll likely shave half a second or so from that time with the manual transmission. One thing I do wish though is that the 124 was a bit louder. The MX-5 has a fantastic engine and exhaust note facilitated by a variable induction system. The Fiat doesn't sound bad and definitely sounds more aggressive under harder throttle input, it's just quieter. As far as fuel economy, regular 87 octane is acceptable, but premium 91 octane is recommended for maximum performance. EPA estimates range between 25 miles per gallon in the city and 36 miles per gallon on the highway, with an average of 29 miles per gallon when equipped with the automatic. The manual transmission is very similar with an average of 30 miles per gallon. Fuel tank capacity is 11.9 gallons. Now let's go ahead and see if she sounds, both sitting still and on the road. Another important difference between the MX-5 and the 124 Spider is the interior. While they share the same styling, seats, technology, and weight saving measures, the Fiat feels more premium and upscale. It's quieter out on the road thanks to an acoustic windshield, added sound insulation, and thicker material for the soft top. There's significantly more soft touch surfaces across the doors and dash. It feels more inviting and cozy, especially with this available saddle brown leather. Fit and finish and overall passenger space is impressive for such a small car. As I mentioned in my MX-5 review, Mazda didn't have to take drastic measures with altering dimensions as simply improving the utilization of available space was enough to increase interior volume. For example, both seats benefit from a new design that replaces traditional springs with a net and urethane material, shedding 8.5 pounds per seat and allowing them to be 35% thinner than the prior MX-5. On top of that, the seats were able to be positioned lower in the chassis to improve the center of gravity and increase headroom by nearly half an inch. The backrest can also recline a bit more, again to make things more accommodating for taller folks. These changes make you feel like you're sitting deeper within the chassis as if you're part of the car. It's a great feeling, still delivering an excellent driving position. Like I mentioned earlier, forward visibility is excellent, despite the 124's longer hood. 
Even though the seats aren't the plushiest things out there, they're more comfortable than you would initially think, offering good support and full manual adjustments. On the driver's seat, there's even adjustable thigh support. The headrests are fixed, and when equipped with the available Bose audio system, both headrests incorporate speakers for a surround sound-like experience. Otherwise, only the driver's seat has headrest speakers. The steering wheel can be tilted manually, but there's no telescoping adjustment. The only thing that didn't carry over to the 124 are the color-matched upper door panels in the MX-5, which certainly gives the Mazda a sportier vibe. The general ergonomics are excellent, with ideally placed controls that are both intuitive and easy to use. Probably the biggest downside to both the MX-5 and the 124 is that due to the lack of storage space, they're not practical cars. There's a touch of space in between the seats and movable cup holders, but there's no door storage pockets or glove box. The Fiat has a bit more trunk space though, but I'll talk about that more later in the video. With regards to safety, there are side impact door beams, dual front airbags, and side impact airbags. The 124 is also available with a suite of safety features, just like the Mazda, but there's a few things different. Depending on the package, you can get rear cross traffic alert, blind spot monitoring, and rain sensing wipers. The 124 is not available with the MX-5's lane departure warning system or its automatic high beams. However, the 124 is available with a rear backup camera and parking sensors, two features not found on any MX-5 currently. On the Lusso, if you opt for the premium collection, you receive the same Bose 9 speaker audio system that comes standard in the MX-5 Club and Grand Touring, including the headrest speakers I mentioned earlier. Otherwise, all models come with a standard 4 speaker setup. In the Lusso and Abarth models, all media is routed through a Fiat branded version of the Mazda Connect infotainment system and a 7 inch touchscreen display positioned in the top of the dash. In addition to voice commands, you can also control the system through a simple rotary controller in the center console. Very similar in concept to what you would see from Mercedes-Benz or BMW, it allows you to easily scroll through the system's features without distractions on the road. It also feels quite nice in your hand with a partial knurled surface more grip. Along with Sirius XM satellite radio, there's HD radio, Bluetooth phone and audio streaming, internet radio capabilities, and two USB ports. Navigation is an optional feature. Right beneath the infotainment system is your climate control with three main rotary dials. To the left hand side is your temperature, fan speed in the middle, and your different zones and front and rear defrost all the way to the right. Down at the very bottom you have a small storage tray, your media inputs, and three stage heated seats for the driver and passenger. In the middle there's a soft padded armrest with a bit of storage. Like I said earlier, this one has the automatic rain sensing windshield wipers and the instrument cluster, while very Mazda-like, has a unique font specific to the 124 Spider. You also have a very detailed driver information system to the left hand side. Alright, next we'll go ahead and shut her down. We'll hop out and check out trunk space. Out back there's a button beneath the trunk lid to open it if you'd like. Inside, you might be surprised to know that the 124 actually has a bit more cargo space than the MX-5. It's an additional half cubic foot worth for a total of 5 cubic feet. This should be more than enough for two weekend travel bags. Along with some illumination, there's also a roadside assistance kit. Well everyone, I hope you enjoyed the in-depth look at the Fiat 124 Spider. Be sure to stay tuned next time, there's always a lot more where that came from. Take care everyone.